says do it again, I will record it. Whoops. I had to stop and get a had to stop and refuel. You know, just as uh just like you, man. If you're uh if you're running low, if your calories are a little bit on the uh, on the underside, guess what? Your performance is gonna begin to uh, it's gonna begin to diminish. You're gonna start sputtering out and before you know it, you're gonna call triple A like can I get some chicken and rice, please? No, it's you get you get the gist and get that. But plan for today, forearms. And I mean, it's I don't know if I'd say dis, a uh, a divisive topic, but it's certainly not the most popular muscle group to uh, to go to the gym for. Which I don't, I'm not gonna blame somebody for. It's definitely not the um, not the craziest thing in the world, but. If you want bigger forearms, I can't think of any better way to do it than to actually fucking hit them. Now, honestly, what I probably should do is just buy, uh, buy a, uh, well, I don't know. I'd have to buy like an 80 pound dumbbell if I wanted to do wrist curls in the house. And then another like 20. I think it'll just be better to actually go to the gym for it. <sighs> but for real. If you want bigger forearms, I think you're missing out on potential gains if your logic is just, okay, well, I want my forearms to grow. Um, hmm, I keep hearing a lot of a lot of guys say just do back without straps, you know, just, uh, just raw dog the pull down and all these fucking hammer strength row machines and stuff, and that's going to be enough forearm stimulation to, uh, to give you some meaty, uh, some meaty grippers, which in some cases, yeah, I mean, there's fucking big ass dogs where they've never done a forearm wrist curl in their life and just the like inadvertent activation from doing dumbbell curls or rows or like whatever else <sighs> ends up being enough to you know give them pretty cool forearms so i mean if that's you then yeah you're sick man don't uh save yourself the trouble just spend that energy on some extra some extra leg work and maybe uh Sure, you don't need a forearm day, but at least don't skip your leg day. I mean, come on, let's be real. Uh, but I think that's all I got for our little our little preamble. So, forearm pump followed by something something. There will be uh, there will be a little something something after this forearm pump. But I guess we'll uh, we'll both find out what that is then. So let's get in there. We can make this lifting portion actually a little quicker. There's not really a crazy amount to see with forearms, and I feel like that's always a uh, that's always the argument against like fucking uh, arm training, shoulder training, I guess calf training probably in forearms too. I mean, you barely hear it for forearms, but it's the same logic. Like I'll see guys where they're, especially for arms, they say, ah, oh, well, I mean, it's just so boring. I mean, what do I just sit there and just do a ton of push downs and then do a ton of curls? I mean, ugh. Right? Cause there's, there's a coolness factor that comes with like a heavy, uh, a heavy bench or you know, rows and, squats or RDLs, whatever else. But I don't see that as a fucking negative, man. If anything, if I've got a simple workout, that just means I get to spend less energy moving around. All I get to do is fucking camp out and spam them. So when it comes to your shoulders, arms, whatever else, this is fucking fine. So my forearm workout is only gonna be two movements, just reverse dumbbell, reverse dumbbell forearm curl, and then regular forearm curls. So this will be, eh. I wouldn't want to go too heavier than uh, too much heavier than 20, like 25, maybe anything above 30. Probably there's fucking no reason, but sit here as such, feel all this kind of fancy shit start like, oh, well, getting pumped up. So I'll do probably five, six of these. I'll just show the one and then we can move on and do the uh, actual kind of flexing kind of big portion of the forearms next. And that'll be it. You know, pose down and come back to uh, go back home and eat a meal probably did some viewer questions too it's been a it's been a couple weeks since a q and a so i'll uh, i'll run through those and if you're curious i don't know i don't like to put the q and a questions in like the comments of one of these videos cuz there's just going to be too many to see usually i post them on like a like a, like i'll make a tweet or i'll make a tiktok about it stuff that won't be so big so i only get like a couple hundred questions to sift through but either way let's get this shit started
진짜. Okay. All right. So, I'm gonna get comfortable. But for you, I'll see you in a minute. Minor change, actually. Instead of jumping straight to heavy dumbbell, I'm gonna do some lighter squeezing cable shift. Because, like, when you do a heavy dumbbell forearm curl, like you bend over the bench, you're like, you get a lot of tension in your forearms, but it's not a crazy amount of actual, like, squeezing, sort of burning of an effect. So, instead of starting with a, like, a heavy skull crusher, this would be like starting with a light rope extension, right? And really kind of squeezing to burn out. But I was just kind of thinking, eh, I think I've had enough forearms. We've been, I've pretty much been hitting them consistently for the last, like, two months of this bulking phase. And I'm coming up on about halfway through it. So morning weight has been fluctuating at about 261, 262 the last couple of days. I think it's about time to throw some back training back in. So I don't think I've seen any real back hypertrophy so far. And I can tell my forearms are already jumping ahead a little bit. And the reason I didn't train forearms like all the fucking time is relative to my whole arm, they are kind of big enough. So I think this will be the last forearm day for a little while. And back is going to come back into the rotation. Okay. Okay. And we keep popping these out, and then we can jump to the first set of uh, whatever the dumbbell curl ends up being. But probably three more here, I think. Now, isn't this just the weirdest thing? So I come home to find my little water jug with two little, well, with a couple little holes in them. Let's, uh, I wonder how often that happens. I don't think you would do that, little Rio. You're, uh, you're the nice kitty. You're the nice one. Now, your little brother, on the other hand, not so convinced. You got anything to say for yourself? Hey, nicest cat you've, cuddles, purrs, everything else. You get three Chipotle, uh, soft tacos in this guy's mouth. You'd think you're dealing with a fucking tiger, I swear. In terms of a little fridge update. Let's see what we're working with here. A variety of vegetables. I, uh, look, I don't understand the fucking allure. Like, I get dogged on so bad. Like, Sam, I just watched your second full day of eating. You didn't have one salad. I mean, look, I, I get what you're saying, but... Take it, I mean, I feel like if you're slamming your vitamins and getting enough red meat, you're kind of hitting most of your micronutrient needs. But either way, about two pounds of cooked potatoes, every sort of condiment under the sun, half of them being the, uh, the low calorie option, especially the mayonnaise. I'm trying to chill out on my, on my fat intake, I'm running a little bit low on eggs. These will probably be gone by the end of the night. No idea how that got there. And then every time I go to Chipotle, I get extra little, um, fucking soft tacos just to kind of save them for later. Totally. Totally trash in terms of cost efficiency, but you know, it's like 600 calories and three and they disappear like nothing The only issue is right there. It's a goddamn battle scar a certain 
somebody who we don't need to name almost got a hold of all of these and scurried off. A little bit of a quicker, a little bit of a quicker upload this day, this time. But yeah, so no more forearms. That'll be the last forearm day for a little bit. Because I'm starting to tell, like, uh, you know, every time I finish forums that I do a little forearm pump check, you know, where you're trying to emulate that, uh, like that Lee Priest shot. It's like the forearm bulge here, it's overpowering my tricep. So what that tells me is I want my triceps to get some more stimulation. I, I can chill out on, uh, I can chill out on forearms. So back is going to be the lift tomorrow, but you're not going to see that until tomorrow. So let's, uh. Let's grab these guys. There we go. Smile. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, they're fun. So a little update. These two uh, didn't get them as kittens. They were they were rescues from the shelter, which honestly kind of saves you some fucking time. You know, I mean Oliver at my parents' house, the other cat we have, he's a uh, we got him as a kitten. But, you know, then you, you like, it's, it's fun having a fucking kitten running around, but honestly, the cats are kind of self-sufficient. I mean, once they're, once they're full grown, they kind of know what to do. So, take it, uh, just a little thought for you. Honestly, having a cat running around just makes your house feel like a home. But what I was going to say to actually reference something other than just the, uh, the fridge and having two cats running around is when it comes to locking in, I think there's a little bit of a like romanticization or romantic, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, okay, yeah, once I lock in, then I'm gonna be having fun. <sighs> and it's not like seriously the case yet. I mean, not immediately, but I think what you're really trying to aim for is reaching a point of, I don't wanna say stability, but kind of, what's the word? Equilibrium, you know, where you can actually have a routine day by day which you can stick to, and which isn't too challenging for you know what you can handle, and will get you results. So that's a that's kind of a fucking trifecta of how I want my bulking phases, dieting phases, my training in general to be. Like I want it to be easy enough that I can do it, which does not mean make it easy. It just means kind of be tough to handle it. Make it a uh, you know be consistent with it and actually get results. So. For the beginner, and this is why I uh, I kind of like the nature of lifting itself because it's very beginner friendly. Because you don't have to be like <laughs> you don't have to do a set of squats until your nose bleeds to get quad stimulation as a beginner, All right? The strength, the uh, I, not even strength curve, the fucking um, the difficulty curve of working out. It's the same as anything. It's like a fucking uh, it's maybe not an exponential, maybe more like a more like a logarithmic or something or uh, like a root sort of function, easy in the beginning, you know? You can do any, I mean, dude, you could put somebody on a, don't even tell them anything, just say, do some leg extensions pretty hard. N nothing else could change, their quads are gonna grow a little bit, you know, and they're barely doing, you know, let's say they just go to failure a couple times, like twice a week, yeah, they're, they're gonna get some quad stimulation as a beginner, because you're most susceptible to gains right when you've started working out and you're not used to it yet, but over time, you're gonna get used to that stimulus, and to counteract that acclimation, you gotta go harder. So, that's uh, you know that seems kind of tricky. It's like oh, the longer I work out, the harder I have to work out. Oh, dude, that just sounds like I'm never gonna make fucking progress. It's like every lift I have to go harder than the last one. But if you push yourself, then every lift you're gonna be a better lifter than you were before. And a better lifter doesn't necessarily mean like oh, I have the best form, I have the best. Uh, Workout split, like I'm, uh, I'm locked in. You know, I just, uh, I just bought the FST RP strength program and everything else. Like, not to, not to dog in anybody's specific program. I mean, these guys know what they're doing. But when I think of somebody as being a more advanced and experienced lifter, like, yeah, you, you know, you want to be reasonably informed about every sort of style and like set you know, approach that you can do, like rest, pause stuff, tempo, everything else, really squeeze. Like, actually be able to like flex your pecs on a uh, on a chest press and not just you know, push the weight on like a Smith press or anything else. But when I think of a more experienced lifter, I'm thinking of somebody who's just fucking like intense, you know, they're comfortable with what they're doing and they love it. So like, yeah, I mean, take some time, think about trying new shit. Every time you see somebody at the gym, at least that is reasonably approachable, 
you know, maybe just fucking talk some smack to them. Every time I see somebody doing um, doing a machine I don't like, or maybe not every time, but sometimes I'll I'll ask him. It's like, you like that? Not, not to make it sound like weird, but it's like, do you like that machine? You know, I, I, it doesn't really do it for me. It's like, what a, it, it, you know, because everybody's fucking got different limb lengths and different, uh, you know, joint angles. <clears throat> sometimes even um, even asymmetrically. Like for me, sometimes I um, I'm a little bit picky about like preacher curls, especially like a machine preacher with both arms at once, because my right arm, like, it's kind of got a little curve to the right. Like, just barely. Nothing that you'd, like, jump out. Like, whoa, what the fuck's wrong with that guy? But just a little different. And the left one's a bit straighter. Like, this feels, like, pretty straight down for me. This one's a little off axis. So what that means is, like, if I try to do a, um, like, a double-sided movement, I might feel more on the left side and less on the right. I mean, it's just... So getting back to what I was saying, like, the guy who's really getting into it, in a way, he kind of just isn't necessarily seeking satisfaction from the results. He's more so getting a daily kind of feeling of accomplishment just by knowing that he's doing what it takes to get the results that he wants. And if you can get yourself in that mindset, then dude, there's no, there's no fucking limit. If you can be a, like if somebody was trying to walk a, um, I don't even know, 100 miles, super marathon, or uh, what do they call it? Either way. You know, the point isn't necessarily, oh, I'm so uncomfortable until I get to the end. Oh, now I'm happy. It's like, in a way, you kind of have to be satisfied each step, each mile, each everything else. Because if you're not, then you're kind of just banking on like, okay, once I finish this, then I'll be satisfied and I get to be happy about myself. And it, it's just like such a, a rough approach, you know? And I think uh, a lot of people kind of get that because when you think about your goals, it's very easy to say like, okay, I'm not good enough until I reach my... I'm not, I'm not good enough until I get this or until I, until I can say this or be this or anything else. And I mean, just not that I've like done something like that where I've thought, okay, I'm going to be happy once I can bench 315 and I'm not happy until I get it. I've never really kind of played into that thought process, but even just from looking at other people, every time anybody talks about the results that they've gotten, if they've ever done something seriously fucking cool, they're never, they never say it's like, I had to treat myself like total dog shit until I got it. And then I get to be happy. It's like, no, they fucking started to love the process, right? So get, a, get happy having some food in your fridge, right? Every time you run in the kitchen, I mean, act like these fucking, these cats, man. Every time we shake the food bowl, dude, they're fiending for it. So honestly, I mean, fuck, man. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you had a plate of chicken, rice, and some kind of barbecue sauce or whatever else, like a full-on meal, and your dog got a hold of it, guess what? That meal is going to disappear in two seconds. Why couldn't you do that? You know, but back to, uh, back to the regular training split, chest, back, arms, legs, repeat. I, I see a lot of comments that are, that I don't, well, I, it's just kind of from a point of being misinformed. You know, when people think of a workout split, they always think, okay, the weekly split. And it's just, it's just the way we think about it. We say pushable legs, we say Arnold, like it's all based on like a one week time frame. So when people will talk about my split in like comment sections, they'll say like, oh, you know, he does every muscle group once a week. It's like, not exactly. Not exactly. I end up hitting everything twice, well, twice every eight days. So nearly twice a week. I, uh, I probably would not recommend a once a week muscle training style workout plan. Twice a week is about right. So twice every eight days. It's only a little different, but they're, uh, they're tussling a little. But yeah, back to normal, so I'll see you tomorrow for a back day.